Okay, everybody. This is the uh, city council meeting for the city of Bonnie Lake for uh, for September 27th, uh, 2022. I'm calling the meeting to order. Uh, very first thing we do is salute the flag. So if everybody could stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, my apologies for being coatless. I, in my haste to get here, I picked up the wrong jacket. So uh, y'all just have to put up with that. Um, okay. Uh, could you call the um, attendance, please, Madam Clerk? Mayor McCullough. I'm here. Deputy Mayor Carter. Here. Councilmember Baldwin. Here. Councilmember Evans. Here. Councilmember Fullerton. Here. Councilmember McClymans. Present. Councilmember Swatman. Present. And Councilmember Watson. Here. Okay, doesn't look like we have any agenda modifications, but we do have one appointment. Madam Clerk. This is motion AB 22142. The council motion would be to confirm the mayor's appointment of Chuck McEwen to serve as Administrative Services Department Director. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Right. All opposed? Order. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, point of order. Yes. Yeah, I was just wondering because when we do confirmations, isn't there discussion associated with the confirmation? Would you prefer to have discussions? I thought we had our discussion. It was either last week or the week before. Well, it was my impression that was a discussion about the open recruitment policy. I see. Okay. I, um, I, I tend well, let's be corrected, but no, no, that's fine. Uh, Councilmember Swatman does wish to have a discussion, so uh, would you like to discuss the mat uh, this matter? We we'll back up off of the vote. If the if that's appropriate, yes. Okay, I, I believe it is appropriate I did, for any motion or anything like that. I do believe it's very appropriate. Good. So, so yes, I yes, I Council Member yeah. Swaman. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I'd like to congratulate the mayor on bringing Mr. McEwen forward for his appointment because you know I've worked with Chuck for years, worked uh, around him, so uh, he's a very uh, capable and important person to the city, and was somebody we definitely need to keep around for these types of positions. Um, well, I'm unfor sure though is the qualifications and I haven't I didn't have anything in the packet for that on the you know if that position is going to still be the director of HR the director of the senior center the director of the clerk's office um, I don't I'm unclear on the qualifications and of you know your applicant so I don't know if there's any more word on that or is has has Mr. McEwen been studying HR and has an HR degree now? That I don't know. All right, I don't know what I don't know what the background of the applicant is technically, other than you know an outstanding performance with the city. Yes. Uh, the only thing I can uh, say about that is that there we uh, we did discuss the application process as you pointed out a couple of weeks ago, and we did have um, a disposition on that. And we're going forward um, uh, today, I believe. Uh, you know, did record your vote. On that now as far as the um, um, any of the qualifications the the way that the city is structured at this point happened prior to me taking office and we haven't um, and we haven't gone through any sort of restructuring um, at this point we're just maintaining what what we have and in accordance to that structure that we have now this motion has been put forward so um, I guess that would be an answer of no to both of you very good. Okay. Do we have any further discussion? Council Member Watson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think Chuck McEwen did an excellent job. We've had numerous other personnel promoted within the within the city that don't have a long prior background where they have moved into. But I've been assured in the past they do a lot of training, get themselves up to date, up to speed where they should be. So I think this will be an excellent promotion for Chuck and for the city itself. All right. Thank you, Council Member Watson. Council Member Evans. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the things I've always talked about when we bring forward a, uh, a person like this is that it is the administration's person to bring forward. It is the council's person to say yes to or no to, and that's regarding what we discussed last week with the open, uh, with the open recruitment. Um, after seeing what Seattle had just went through after two years and several hundred thousand dollars to pick the same interim police chief that had been there since the last one had left, I think it's just a show of uh, our awareness of it's it's the administration's person to put forward now if, if it's someone that we don't choose 
today and right now is our voice to say that. So uh, I'm happy with, that we've got Chuck and I'm glad we didn't waste uh, two years and hundreds of thousands of dollars of our people's money in finding the person that had already been serving in that role for the last year. All right. Thank you, Council Member Evans. Do we have any further discussion on the matter? Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Carter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would agree. I think Chuck's a great choice for this position. Uh, he's been doing the job as an interim for uh, some time now. Uh, my concern in the future uh, for all these things is I believe that a process should be in place that we kind of go outside typically to look around just to make sure that we're getting the best qualified person. However, it's the council's uh, prerogative to waive that uh, each time. Uh, and I think it's appropriate for the council to continue making that decision on a case-by-case -case basis as we move forward. So again, I like the process of it um, going outside because I think it's open, uh, an open process, which is, is good and transparent. Uh, however, uh, I also don't want to waste this taxpayer's money when we're not really getting anything for that. So this is a great job and I look forward to Chuck serving in that position. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Deputy Mayor. Um, any further comment? Okay, I believe we, oh, oh Council I'm Member sorry. Fullerton. <laughs> well, I just remember um, when starting out as a new council member and a new mayor, <laughs> the process of, it seemed like there was a lot of people leaving and, and a lot of different processes that we were having to go through and uh, interviewing and all of this, you know, to keep the city working. And we have somebody who's willing to stay and has been doing an excellent job for the last year and has learned the position uh, through the school of hard knocks or common sense, whatever you want to call it. But um, so I, I feel like, yes, it is a good idea to uh, look outside to make sure that people are wanting the job enough to perform the duties you know, to the highest quality um, and to be competitive, but at the same time, um, having the ability to waive that like we did with with Chuck, um, I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I, think, I think this is a good choice and we have somebody who loves the city who wants to continue to work for the city and it's one less job interview that we have to do at this point. So, <laughs> and um, and he's doing an excellent job. So, um, I'm I'm for it. Okay, thank you, Council Member Fullerton. Um, as far as the criteria of willing to stay, I was very grateful for that when I took when I uh, took office, and um, kind of mirrors my uh, dating experience. If anybody was willing to date me, then they were way up there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So anyway, do we have any further commentary or discussion? Council Member McClymans. So uh, I would like to congratulate Chuck. I think it's a good move for the city, right? Um, I would never disagree with that. Um, I think Chuck was up for a little competition, though. No? I think it would have been <laughs> rewarding for him to be sitting here in the same position having uh, uh, survived a competition. But I think what's more important, I, I also want to thank... Uh, Council Member Swatman for bringing up the fact that you know we should be aware of the qualifications, what the roles and responsibilities for a position are, and the qualifications of the candidates when we make these decisions, right? And um, so I just appreciate him trying to bring that through because that's all an important part of the process for everybody, right? So for the person who's taking the position, for the people who are appointing the position, right? So appreciate I. It's been a pretty open process, and I think we have good communication, so thank you. That's a point well taken, Council Member McClements. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? All right, are we ready to vote on the matter? Okay, in the um, motion for a motion of the City Council of the City of Bonnie Lake, Pierce County, Washington, confirming the Mayor's appointment of Chuck McEwen to serve as the Administrative Services Department Director. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, looks like that uh, this motion One has been passed. Mr. Mayor. Oh, you didn't okay. Ask for abstentions. Any any ex, any abstentions on this matter? I abstain. Okay, and I believe uh, per Roberts and per Sturgis, you do need to 
I do. Uh, give. Okay, go Very ahead. Good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I would uh, definitely support Chuck in the position. I just uh, want to note, I just want to use my abstention to note that I individually don't have the information required to make a good substantial decision on the matter. So happy to support that at any point in time. But currently, uh, as noted, you know, I was not supplied with any information about qualifications for the applicant to the position. So I'm going to have to abstain currently, but would welcome Chuck. Obviously, uh, you'll be a long member of the city. Okay, and I believe, Madam Clerk, that means with a with an abstention, with an explanation, that means the vote is officially six zero. Okay. All right. Let's um, let's continue. Um, we are we. Uh, oh, we do have a public hearing tonight. I don't believe we have anybody signed up for that uh, public hearing. Uh, now, uh, uh, Mr. Decker, would this be for a public hearing or the citizen commentary that we have afterwards? Both. Okay. Well, Mr. Decker, come on and approach the dais. Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes, Council Member. Were you to read the public hearing first, please? Oh, yes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. This would be. Um, Madam Clerk, would you prefer to read the uh, hearing? Yes, please. This is public hearing on AB 22115, Resolution 3074, authorizing the mayor to sign the Peak 410 Business Park Development Agreement. Okay. Uh, Mr. Decker. Thank you. Dan Decker, as you know, past council member, council mayor, grew up on 170th Street East, Bonnie Lake, Washington. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm very happy to see that things are going forward for this uh, 410 Parks Agreement. It, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more information going to the public prior to this type of a development signature because this is an expensive and very important thing happening to the city. I'm, I am in agreement with it and hopefully we can have more information about the public hearings prior to coming to the council meeting and discovering them. And sidebar, Chuck McHewitt is a perfect person for the job. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Decker. Um, uh, the source of, um, of what you were saying, we did have a very extensive conversation on this matter last week at the workshop. Uh, were you aware of that and you where you, you could attend that? Oh, well, <laughs> it is your prerogative, Mr. Decker. Okay. Um, okay, and as Mr. Decker did, and I think everybody else's, you would have uh, five minutes that you would be able to spend uh, uh, speaking on the matter if you so choose. So do we have anybody else for the good of the order? This is in relation to the... Uh, to the public hearing. Public. And then, uh, Madam Clerk, do you have any written comments on this matter? We do. We have comments from Pierce County listing what requirements would be needed for traffic and the permit requirements for Pierce County. We also have comments from the Department of Ecology on needing wetland impact permits and the environmental checklist that is needed. And we also have a comment from Ms. Contos mm -hmm. on flooding issues. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. And they were all provided to council before council. All right. And I will ask again, is there uh, anybody else who would like to speak on this item? Uh, Mr. Decker, this, we're still on the public hearing. All right, I will now close uh, the public hearing and we'll go on to citizen commentary. Again, this is your time to address the council on any city business. You do have five minutes. When you come up to the uh, podium, please uh, state your name and address for the record. Council Mayor Dan Decker, 1270 Street East, Money Lake. As you know, I'm a past council member. I have an email from uh, Quinn Dostrom to the mayor, and I shall read it to you. And then I have an email from the mayor responding. Um, the city of Bonnie Lake is not Seattle. It is not Tacoma. It is not Houston, Dallas, or even L.A. It is a small town in Washington. Uh, listening to you last night, 
made a proclamation that had nothing to do with the city that I live in really upset her. As I cannot recall any great incident in this city like you were trying to stop individually have a right to feel anything they wish to about 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 any of the topics you listed. As a whole, the citizens did not seem to have a problem. I have just told you we're trying to come to up with something like Mayor Johnson did last year. Why didn't you just do that? Instead of bringing up things that didn't make any sense at all to me and what I heard from people that spoke didn't make sense to them except for one lady that need needs as much help as I'm not going to say that part uh, then you put the council members names on the proclamation who even asked them how stupid can that be I don't understand why she said that but we're not um, Seattle and your proclamation was stupid in my opinion Quinn Dahlstrom um, from the mayor. Thank you for your comment, Quinn. While I cannot share any personal opinions, I can share that it is all part of a long-range plan to get monies from various grants, resources. I am more than willing to take some short-term heat at the end result getting resources that Bonnie Lake needs. From what I've read and understand this to say on both sides, the city, as uh, Quinn thought, didn't really like the proclamation and didn't think we needed it. And the mayor only did it so that he could get money from, from a grant. And that's, there's something wrong in my mind about doing something in a deceptive way for some kind of a gain other than a true gain. And I believe that something is not right with this proclamation. And personally speaking, it should be withdrawn, thrown away, destroyed, forgotten about, and just plain apologize to the people for what the reasoning was for the proclamation. I'm not even a little bit happy about the reasoning for it because it's, it's, it's a, just a dupe of the people, just not right. And I'm just going to say one important thing about the whole thing. If somebody says something to the council or the mayor, the response should not be like what I just read to the council and to the people. Personally speaking, the mayor should have thanked Quinn for the document, acknowledged it in that he had received it, and left it lay. Because I'm sure that the mayor did not really intend for what is, he said to be read the way it was read. And I'm sorry that it did happen that way, but people are really upset about what it says. So please, council, mayor, when people send you emails, be very cautious of the words you use. It's very important because you are political, and the people are your constituents, and we must, you must protect them, and you must protect the city. And thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate you very much. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Decker. Okay, do we have anybody else for the good of the order? Yes, sir. Uh, David Bowen. Bowen. I currently live at 22523 State Route 410 in Bonnie Lake. I'm sorry, Mr. Bowen. Is it? Yes. Is Mr. Bowen being picked up by the microphone? Is, okay. Thank you. You can continue. I was just wondering. I, oh, I was wondering if you were picked up, being picked up by the microphone. I was having a hard time hearing you. Can everybody hear me okay? I can. Yes. Thank you. Uh, 
I'm sure you folks don't care to hear my life history. <laughs> but my family came to this area in 1931. I went what we now call Highway 410, which of course used to be Highway 5. But then when Interstate 5 was built, it was too confusing. Mm. What we now call State Highway 410 was US 410 from Chicago to Tacoma hmm. before I-90. My dad worked in the shipyards. He could see the war was going to end, and thank God we were going to win. So he opened a grocery store gas station at the corner of South Perry Road and Highway 5, which we now call 410. When I was six years old, I learned to play hopscotch. So we would go out on 410 and draw our hopscotch. And somebody would watch. And if a car was coming, we'd pick up our little things real fast. They'd go by. I took over the wrecking yard in 65. It was very small in those days. So as I brought in cars, I would take the fence down in the afternoon on a day like today in the fall, and I would fall the trees out onto the South Prairie Road, start cutting them up for firewood. If a car came by, they would often stop and help me. If they didn't want to help me, I would just move the stuff and they would go on. The times have changed, my friends. They have changed. I have been actively in business in this community since August of 65. Very few here remember August of 65. <laughs> I could tell you all these stories about why the fences were built. That tall red fence I had was built because Lyndon Johnson's wife had a phobia about junk cars. And when our beloved president was assassinated, Lyndon Johnson became president. He could have got any bill passed he wanted. One was beautify America, so that you had to have a side obscuring fence because his wife had a fear of phobia. I've only met two people in my whole life with that phobia but they're afraid of automobiles with no doors and no windows. I see Chris Lear is here. Young man, building a wonderful project. They have bought part of my property. I, it breaks my heart to sell it, but times change, my friends, times change. As I was driving today, I remember before the sewers, most of the roads in Bonnie Lake were dirt. So in the winter, you would have all these chuck holes. I've always been an accommodating kind of a fellow. And I can remember I kept in my toolbox ball joints for intermediate Chevrolets and other General Motors. So somebody would call me on the phone, usually on their way home from work, I would jump in my tow truck. I would come here to Bonnie Lake. I would pick the car up in the street, take the tire off, take my chisel with three strokes. I used to be a strong man. Three strokes, I could cut the rivets off that ball joint, take the nut off, put in a new ball joint. I carried new bolts. I'd put it together, use the weight of the car to put it down. I could put that ball joint in in less than 10 minutes. I charged them $9. <laughs> the other day I bought some diesel for my tractor. It was over $6. Dan knows I sometimes get started and go on and on. <laughs> but the reason I rise to speak today is to tell you I myself didn't see it, but my family members all did when most of Bonnie Lake had no electricity. 
My parents bought the land on 410 because it had electricity. They lived over by Lake Bonnie on those days on some land that belonged to Pat Smith. I was in small business in this community since August of 1965. Just last week, again, at a grocery store, a man came up and shook my hand and thanked me for selling him auto parts at like 11 o'clock at night because his car was broke down and he needed to go. I lived there and we lived the old way. If somebody was broke down and they needed a part, if it was 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, we went and got it. Those times are changing. Chris has got this beautiful project coming. But I implore you, I implore you, I would not beg to save my life. When my house was burning down, I would not beg the fire department to come. It's a crazy story, but anyway, I called, I said, my house is on fire. They said, can you see the flames? I said, no. They said, your house is not on fire. I said, my goddamn house is on fire. They said, no, it's not. I wouldn't beg them to come. But my friends, I beg you tonight to keep small business in mind. Keep small business in mind. I've been in small business my whole life. I've helped a lot of people. A lot of small businesses in this community have helped the community. Now, they didn't pay the kind of funds Chris is going to be paying. They didn't hire as many people as Chris is going to be hiring. But I'm telling you, as an old man who has seen much, keep small businesses viable. Thank you, sir. I believe uh, Councilmember Swatman has been on the council since August of 1965. No, no, no. <laughs> that was a good year. That was actually like the, the, the November that year. <laughs> you, got, you got everybody here, Mr. Mayor. You got you know, Julia Bowen. Is she going to speak too? Or? No, I'm not speaking. Okay. <laughs> what about Roger? Mr. Watt? Do we have anybody else for the good of the order? Would you be kind enough to say a few words? I would love that. <laughs> He's been with the city forever, if people don't know. Roger Watt, 12029, 225th Avenue Court East uh, in Bonnie Lake, unincorporated Pierce County. <laughs> I uh, used to own a driving range on uh, State Route 410, mm. right next to Dave Bowen's property. I bought that in 1996, and I operated it uh, up until couple of years ago, I had some medical issues and I couldn't do it anymore. But it was something that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. I enjoyed my activity here in the city of Bonnie Lake, people I met. And now I can't go to a golf course and not have somebody come up to me and say, do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> and sure enough, it's somebody that used to come into the driving range. So this place has real good memories for me. Uh, what Chris is doing uh, pleases me to no end. Uh, he's a smart man. Uh, I believe he knows what, he what he's doing. Proven that he can develop property. And I think what he'll do here in East Town is gonna to be wonderful for the city. So I totally applaud his efforts. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we, oh, yes, sir. Better say something after Dave. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> My name's Paul Weber and I have, I live in Bonnie Lake, not as long as Dave has, but quite a while. And uh, I, I live at, uh, up in Sky Island at 9619, 183rd. Um, I've also been on the design committee since Bob Young was mayor. But the only thing I really want to say is that 
near as I can tell, Bonnie Lake, Buckley, Enumclaw have been bedroom communities pri by and large for a long time. Everybody complains about traffic. I would really urge the council to accept this plan and move forward on it because the solution to traffic in part is to have jobs here, not driving someplace else. So if I had to guess, I would say that this particular project might not even add any traffic in it at all because that, that will play big into the future. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, anybody else for the good of the order? Okay, um, we will move on to correspondence. Uh, Madam Clerk. The city clerk's office received an email that was shared prior to the meeting with the mayor and the council from Carl Kern, requesting council to help with the construction traffic at the end of Vandermark Road East. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, let's move to committee reports. Um, do we have a report from the finance committee? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The finance committee did not meet tonight, but the next meeting will be 5 p.m. Tuesday, October 11th, upstairs. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Community Deve Development Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Community Development Committee last met on September 20th. Uh, we had several items of business. They included an update on the Public Services Center project update for, um, of course, the Public Works Center is what it's more namely called. Um, getting close. We're still on target there for the end of the... Yeah, he's still giving us a thumbs up. We'll be over there very soon. Um, also, we had a resolution 3089, which we recommended for approval and move that forward. You'll see it on tonight's agenda for the chiller at the Public Safety Building. That's that extraordinarily long lead time item like there is nowadays with everything you try to build. Also, a resolution 3072, which is the PTO parks and uh, plan, that large plan. Jason's done a great job putting that all together. The committee recommended that to go to the full council for their consideration at a future workshop. And the same with the resolution 3073, which is a parks impact rate fee study, which is coordinated with that. Again, Jason's doing a great job with those. Just had to get the full council's input at a workshop level on those. Uh, those were, of course, also, as per my note, kind of listed on the projected agendas, and we kind of moved that a little bit. So I don't know how exactly that works because, you know, as the public was looking at that, maybe they were thinking they were actually going to be on this meeting, but appropriately enough, they had been moved at the committee level. So I you wanted know, to make sure that the public knew what was going on with the, those two. Uh, also, items of business was Resolution 3090, which is a construction contract uh, services for an update on the cost of the amendment and that's in your packet this evening for it's still under the total allocation of the bonded monies that we projected to spend at the Public Works Services Center. But it, as we know, cost a little bit more than what we projected it would to begin with. So it's a little, those are driven by change orders authorized by the city. So that's how, you know, we've had extensive discussions on a lot of that before. Uh, approved our minutes, and then we also talked a little bit about the ball field for parking. Uh, we'll probably talk about that, touch on it maybe tonight a little bit more because there's an actual decision card. I don't know if that one's coming up tonight or not. Okay. So those were items of business this evening, or that evening, Mr. Mayor, that we forwarded. Thank you. All right, Council Member Swatman. Thank you. Uh, Public Safety Committee, please. Uh, public safety's next meeting is October 11th at 3.30 p.m. upstairs on the second floor. Public is welcome to join. Okay, thank you, Council Member Evans. Uh, Mr. John Stone, I have been trying to kick you out of this building for the last four months. What, what's know. going on? <laughs> Do we have finally an ETA <laughs> right. when it's going to open up? Uh, currently, we're anticipating a move-in uh, to begin on October 17th. Oh, services. Very good. So, thank, thank you. Of Mr. 2022, Mayor. Chief. Thank you. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> Promises, promises. Okay, yeah. I don't see any other reports. We'll get there. Uh, so now we have the consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the consent agenda is adopted. Now we'll go on to the decision card presentations. Mr. Botapich, the floor is yours. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, tonight we're starting our biennial budget process with going through several of the funds for the decision card process. Uh, just a quick reminder that any new initiative or 
item that wish to be purchased that's in excess of $10,000, we bring forward through the decision card process as put forward by the department directors and their management staff. Uh, that's, that's then evaluated by uh, the mayor, myself, and Sherry Ryerson, our chief financial officer. Uh, several of the items that you'll see listed in the decision card package uh, are included in the mayor's proposed balanced budget. Uh, those are identified in green uh, if you happen to print it off uh, in color. And tonight we'd like to run through the street fund, the park fund, stormwater, drug fund, and then the ER&R fund. So with that, I'll just go ahead and get started. Uh, we do have staff here this evening to answer any questions that you may have about any of the decision cards that we're talking about here. Uh, the first one is included in the mayor's proposed balanced budget. Uh, it's the Church Lake guardrail project for $14,000. Uh, and it would be approximately 75 feet of guardrail there at the corner of Church Lake, where I think a number of you are aware. Uh, we've had a car go through, have had several cars go through a, a fence there in, in recent memory. And so, again, this one does not necessarily need a, a vote unless it's something that the council wants to pull out of the mayor's budget. Okay. Is there any discussion on the matter? Is that why they're green? Yes, that's the green. The green ones are included in the mayor's proposed budget. And, and for the public, Mr. Mayor, maybe uh, what's the status on the property uh, that we just talked about, the public hearing? What, what's the rest of that process maybe? Because I I, there could be some people here that are they're welcome to stay for budget stuff, but maybe their interest is solely on that property uh, piece. I don't know what the rest of that process looks like. Yes, so so per, the, per the council's oh. rules of procedure, uh, since there was public testimony tonight, you discuss that at the next workshop on the 11th or 4th, October 4th, and then you would uh, make a decision on October 11th. Oh, okay. So we will not be deciding on that property uh, until October 11th. Tonight, our, our next city council meeting, which is okay. two weeks from now. Very good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Do we have any discussion on the um, Church Lake Guard Rural Project? Okay. We'll now take a vote to accept the uh, street CIP. Um, uh, fund decision card. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All uh, any nays? <laughs> any opposed? Oh well. <laughs> okay, I believe. Um, it, so, and just to make the record clear with the uh, with the background noise, uh, do, do we <laughs> have so any opposed to uh, to oh, this? I that was the yes bell. <laughs> 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 no, I deliberately left my gavel up. <laughs> Okay, looks like uh, we have adopted um, that. Um, Mr. Vodapich, next, please. Yeah, the next two are for the park fund. Uh, as Councilmember Swatman referred to earlier, the field four conversion to truck and trailer parking. Uh, that's proposed to happen in the year, fiscal year 2023. Uh, the anticipated cost is $525,000. And then the second item is the Midtown Park mowing. If you'll all remember several years ago, we did do uh, clearing the underbrush in Midtown Park and it's grown up and needs to be uh, revisit it again, and then installing chain link fencing at Victor Falls Park. Uh, both of those are anticipated to be $60,000 in fiscal year 2024. Okay. Um, any further discussion on the matter? I know we've discussed this at uh, past meetings. Uh, Council Member Evans. Oh, thank you very much. On the uh, public, on the, the cleanup at Midtown, um, it was last done in 2020, uh, two years ago, I imagine that uh, between now and 2024, it'll probably grow again. I just suggest if this is going to be a biannual thing to maybe look at putting forward in a budget as a permanent issue so it doesn't have to come before us every time. That's point well taken, Councilmember Evans. So, Do we have any further discussion on Councilmember Watson? Um, I agree with us doing the midtown mowing <clears throat> every two years, but we didn't do the mound next to medical center. As you and I have discussed, people are they're living up there every now and then. Yes. So I would like us to be that part of the cleanup. If not, doesn't we can't fit into the budget? Maybe get that done at least first and see what we can with the rest of the park that way. Oh, that's a point well taken as well, uh, Councilmember uh, Watson. Do we have any? Uh, oh, Councilmember Swatman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so these are in black. Then is that the there will yes, be so, additions? So these are not included as part of the the mayor's by balanced biannual budget. So these would be decision cards that we'd be looking for the city council to take action on individually. Okay. So there's a cost associated, say, for the ball field for 525 projected. Hopefully we'll be able to do something uh, uh, with that. Um, where obviously the proposed budget that the mayor has supplied is balanced, not including this. Correct. So this expenditure. Actually, uh, thank you, Ms. Ryerson. 
Oh, okay, yes, Miss uh, Ryan, uh, Miss Ryerson, our chief financial Thank officer. Uh, could you answer this, please? Thank you. <laughs> yes, I can. Um, so, if you look at packet, I believe it's page 99 or 100. Let me get there real quick. Um, you'll see my anticipated ending fund balance for 2024. And if you look at the parks fund, I anticipate um, with some of the Great monies we received have been more than what I projected prior. Um, there is money there to do both of those projects. So you're saying we, if we approve these, then the ending fund balance is where we would get the funds from? It, it's not from ending fund balance, no, it, because it's a CIP. So not to get too technical, um, but yes, it would reduce how much your ending fund would be. Am I loud enough? Okay. Oh, well, uh, we can oh, hear you. Yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Council Member Evans. If, if I'm hearing you right, the funds, the, the, the revenues that fund that department have exceeded what the projections were. So the, uh, the tax revenue from um, uh, REIT, REIT and um, building permit or um, park impact fees is in, in excess of what the previous budget was. So that would be what would be funding this instead of coming out of ending fund. So we have an excess, Correct. we have more so in there than, than planned. When you think of ending fund, it's generally associated with your general fund because your general fund, your revenues need to meet or exceed your expenditures. On the other funds, they're CIP funds. So you anticipate that you might build those funds up um, as Jason has talked about when it comes to SDCs or PIF, TIF, any of the impact fees. You build those up in anticipation of eventually doing a project. So you don't really kind of look at the ending fund for that, but yes, it would reduce what your ending fund is. On that fund? On that fund, yeah. So in your parks fund, I'm anticipating you'll end 2024 at about $3.2 million. Um, if you choose to approve both these projects, obviously you would take that from that 3.2 million it would actually move up in the line item under expenditures, essentially reducing your ending fund. Okay, do we have any further questions? Any further commentary? Uh, Deputy Mayor Carter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think, I don't have a question. I'm just gonna make a statement that I think uh, these are two needed things. Uh, we talked about the uh, building the the parking out uh, and taking care of that for Allen Yard Park, uh, that's desperately needed. I think we've all seen that and, and want to take care of that. And then the uh, Midtown mowing uh, issue is essentially a public safety issue. Um, you'll end up with a lot of uh, unwanted people out there uh, if we don't take care of that. And that's, that definitely helps that. And that's a small price to pay for taking care of that issue. So thank you. Oh, and I could just Falls. piggyback on that. The, the, the fencing at the Victor Falls Park is a public safety issue as well. As yeah. I think we're all aware we've had, recently we've had several falls yeah. out there. Great yeah. minds think alike. Thank you. Not <laughs> to say the same thing. Sorry if I stepped on your toes, man. No. <laughs> okay, are we uh, prepared to vote on um, on the park fund decision cards? I believe so. Okay, all in favor uh, to accept the park fund decision cards, say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, I believe it has been approved. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, point of order for the next ones that have multiple. Can, yes. we, can we vote line by line? Oh, uh, I believe uh, I believe that is a point well taken. Does the, uh, does the council accept voting line by line? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yes. very good. <laughs> really? And for that, because uh, uh, you, you caught me without the uh, budget actually up, or you can just for line by line. There we go. You know, and I don't have that page unless it is. Oh, here it is. There you go. I do that, have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now this would be for the uh, stormwater fund. So we'll start with the NPDES action plan. <clears throat> Any discussion? I believe that one probably needs some explanation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just just uh, quickly, uh, this is a requirement of our uh, phase two MPDES permit 
Um, the stormwater action plan is something that uh, must be completed in order to stay in compliance with the permit. Um, I did take a quick look at what would happen if we did not do this, because I anticipate Council Members McClyman's questions about that. <laughs> and, uh, and typically what you see when uh, an entity is in violation of the MPDES permit is a monetary fine of some sort. That can vary anywhere from $1,000 to $25,000 per day while the violation is ongoing. That's the best I have as far as action that could be taken um, uh, if we were not to be in compliance with the MPDES permit. Okay, do we have any questions for uh, Mr. Johnstone? Sure, yeah. Um, uh, so, Council Member Swan. So for clarification, this is here because it's a new requirement or something? Is that why? It's it is a new requirement and also it exceeds the 10000 Sure, yeah, threshold. clearly over the $10,000 threshold that, because I was, you know, the, I think maybe the unknowledgeable uh, person may be assuming that we already have an MPDS permit and we already operate under MPDS, so. We, yeah, and that's a good, that's a good point to make. We do currently have an MPDS permit, but the federal government has been making a lot of changes to the way that program is administered, which comes along with new requirements that we've not had to do previously. This is one of those. So some of this is an unfunded mandate type of a thing. Is that what we're trying to Correct. Do? Yeah. <laughs> For the moment, we're about to fund it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Well, pay now or pay later. Yeah. Right. Do we have any further questions? Um, oh, Councilmember McClyman. Um, is there any way that, do we have any ARPA funds available for this? Mr. Johnson, did you anticipate that question? I, I did not. I think uh, that it'd probably be better answered by uh, our CFO. She's Ms. Uh, Ryerson. I, I, I'm certainly prepared to do that. Um, we do have money for this. That's not what I would recommend you use your money for. Um, the storm fund is a proprietary fund, and so it should be able to support itself. Um, I know you guys are wanting to reduce the water rates, and so we've actually asked the consultant if we use the balance of all of the ARPA funds, what that would do to the rates so that we can come back with those scenarios for you. Um, so at this point, we're, we don't have the information on what that would do to your water rates, um, but we are trying to use that money wisely and uh, get the water rates to a, a level that the council will be happy to accept. So we're still working on that. So my recommendation would be that this comes out of the storm utility. And for full disclosure on that, we're still waiting on the water rate study. And from what I've heard today, anticipated six weeks. Is that uh, your uh, understanding too, Ms. Ryerson? So we have sent them some um, additional information and there are um, scenarios that we're asking, such as if we use the ARPA money, what that would do. So um, we've, we've stopped their process a little bit. Um, I would say they were probably closer to come back, but we had some other scenarios we wanted to run. So yes, probably after the budget process. Um, so yeah, probably about six weeks. No, it's better to get a complete uh, study on this. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Ryerson. Do we have any further questions? Uh, Council Member Evans. Um, I know personally at my work, the DOE has us have a SW EPP, and that's an annual fee. Is What's the recurring cost on this? Um, do you have, I, don't, I don't know that there is actually a recurring cost. I, I would have to look into that. I don't have an answer. Okay, so the, right the, like ours, we have to pay $4,000 a year every year just based on how much money we or how many how much we do in sales for some reason it's yeah for this for this particular plan you're taking in one area of town and then basically simplified version you're proposing improvements to okay. that meet current requirements so there i don't believe will be necessarily be a requirement to update that plan over time you're not paying for an additional permit or anything okay um yeah go ahead um, Jack Neazer, Superintendent of Public Works. Um, as part of the MPDS, right now we do the regular uh, maintenance routine. What they're requiring us to do now is be more proactive in our approach. And so this will actually take one area of the city where we actually have to develop this thing called a SMAP. And basically it's an actual retrofit of the facilities, an action plan that we have to implement, which our staff at Public Works will do. And so you can actually see this with a lot of our MPDS. We are now in a transition phase, not only for stormwater, but also with the sewer. Um, so this is the first one, and basically it's for us to get assistance to put that plan together that's above the normal of the maintenance routine. 
and I, I'm sorry, Mr. Niehauser, what, what was the acronym name that you were? Uh, oh, they call it the SMAP, the Stormwater Action Plan. MAP? MAP. M-A-P. Okay, SMAP. I'm going to write that one down. Thank you, Mr. Niehauser. <laughs> okay, any further? Oh, Council Member McClimans. So are, are we going to get $100,000 worth of value out of it? I mean, is our stormwater going to be that much better? And this is going to be for us to be compliant with MPDS permit. No. <laughs> yeah, probably not, I heard. but we do need to be in compliance. Yes. <laughs> Another regulation. Okay, Council Member Pullerton. Is this actually like a one-time payment, you know, to kind of upgrade the systems, or is this going to be like ongoing, we're going to have to continue to put this into the budget? Uh, correct. For this certain area, for what we're requesting for, it's one time for this. Um, there might be more in the future, but I don't know what that looks like yet. Councilmember Swampman. Yeah, so as identified by our CFO there, this is a proprietary fund, right? It's basically one of our enterprise funds, I believe. Yeah. Um, so do we know what, you know, $112,000 does to the rates or anything? Or is that what kind of pressure? I don't know. So what FCS is also studying um, your stormwater rates. We haven't raised those rates in many years. Um, so that's also going to come back from the consultant. Um, these are included in the rate study. Sure, yeah, because I'm, uh, you know, I'm, of course, offering up, like some of the other council, whether the ARPA funds or even other funds could, depends on what it does to the rates, you know. I wouldn't suggest it, I just mentioned it as something, because I, I, without knowing what it actually does to the rates, maybe it does nothing, likely. I don't know what the, you, Sherry, you have an idea, that's, is that one of those, multi how many millions of dollars a year what kind of what's the budget in the stormwater fund currently a year do you have a an idea on uh that? yeah i yeah i do hold on uh, aka is it, i'm trying to figure out is this is a drop in the bucket or is this a significant in years at 56 cents per month might be or something is that what you're yeah well we have 20 000, 20 000 yeah. in and outside of is is our no it doesn't stormwater go only inside. So we're getting right. about $1.9 okay. million dollars in the storm. It's not mm -hmm. a large fund, but $100,000, yeah, it's not going to probably affect it that much. Yeah, yeah. Okay, any further? To, oh, Deputy Mayor Carter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question is, it's $112,000 for the plan, and then how much money is going to be in that plan that we then have to... I, we, maybe we don't know that answer yet, but like, okay, that's a whole bunch more money. This is just the beginning, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. uh, correct. This is more of an assessment, and, and the goal is a lot of the work we can do in-house with the public works staff as part of our normal routine, um, but we will know more as we actually go through this process. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, let's take it to a vote. Um, so, all in favor of approving the MPDS action plan, say aye. 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 Any nays? Nay. And I believe that would be uh, one nay uh, from uh, Councilmember McClymans. Councilmember McClymans, uh, Madam Clerk, did inform me that we do have to individually record every nay mm -hmm. that goes with this, which okay. is why I put that. Okay. That's fair. All right. Uh, very good. Let's move on to the Ptarmigan uh, Ridge Overflow. Uh, do we have any discussion on that matter? Yeah, why is the P silent? <laughs> uh, you'd have to ask Shakespeare that. Okay. <laughs> you could have done it for under a dollar so we didn't have to do this. <laughs> right? Nine hundred. Keep that in mind for next time. Gone with the Herman Cain 9999. <laughs> right? Sorry for Pro that. tip. <laughs> Mr. Johnstone insisted on rounding things up. I, I tried to get him not to, and he insisted. Sherry, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, now for the public and for the record, do we have any uh, explanation of this uh, before we go forward? Yeah, and Mr. Niehauser. Um, sure, and this one, it, you have a Tomerican Ridge neighborhood where uh, the last four years they've experienced the neighbors to let us know that there's been a backup in their storm system, and it's due to where the outlet is, um, back to where the catch basin starts, mm -hmm. and so it sense that there might be an elevation concern out there, and so typically with the storm system, you have a consultant engineer that has a stamped 
um, drainage report. We didn't need to actually look at the drainage report, stamp by the engineer, decide is it an elevation issue, and then can we address it either in-house or do we have to get someone to actually physically fix it? Um, right now, we're actually doing a lot of work of cleaning it, uh, cleaning the drainage area, but we need a long-term solution, and, and that's what we heard from the public. So this $10,000 will, for us, uh, to get consultant services to look at it and come up with a long-term solution. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Niehauser. Do we have any discussion on the matter? Okay, seeing no discussion, let's take it to a vote. All in favor of approving the uh, Patarmigan, that <laughs> uh, no, that's... ridge overflow, say aye. 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 Any nays? Nay. And that would, be, I'm sorry, that would be <laughs> Deputy Mayor Carter. Um, you said that any uh, abstentions? Okay, looks like uh, the uh, Tarmigan Ridge overflow has been approved. Uh, now we move on to um, uh, the uh, drug fund, which and would so be. This, yeah, and so this is included in the mayor's proposed by uh, balanced budget. Uh, it's breaching pack packs for officers, so it's a public safety issue. Uh, certainly in current, in light of current events recently, it's an important tool for officers to have uh, in their tool bag, so to speak. Uh, and again, it, it was included in the mayor's proposed budget. Okay, do we have any discussion on the matter? Hearing no discussion, let's take it to a vote. All in favor of approving the breaching backpacks? Aye. Uh, aye. Say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Do we have any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. The drug fund breaching backpacks program has been approved. Let's move on to the ER and R fund, which is the heavy duty uh, vehicle lift. Um, do we have an explanation? Oh yeah, this is the last one for the evening and I will refer to Mr. Johnstone. So the uh, heavy vehicle lift is a piece of equipment that uh, we originally were proposing to just purchase as part of the soft cost for the public services center project. But as the project went on, it became apparent that there was a couple things we were gonna have to pair off of that and push through the budget process just because we wanted to preserve any remaining funds to finish construction of the public services center. This item in particular is a necessary piece of equipment to service our larger vehicles. Uh, give you an example that this is something that has occurred several times just occurred this last season is if we have a snow plow go down we currently don't have a way to get that vehicle up and off the ground for service so if anybody's heard my story before uh, you know pulling up in the middle of the night and seeing al young lying in a puddle outside while he's working on these things on the ground is is frankly not safe and it's not appropriate um, so this vehicle lift would be sized in order to be able to get those vehicles up off the ground um, it is part of a longer plan where we have been attempting to get positioned to the point where we can then perform much more of our own service in-house. We made the investment to approve an additional mechanic. We've made the investment in the building to house that and, and, and foster that program. We now need some equipment in order to, be, you know, to make that a success. And so that's why we're proposing that this evening. Okay, thank you, Mr. Johnstone. Uh, you'd be impressed in how uh much time Mr. Ryerson took in explaining this to me when we were going over this. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> okay, do we have any discussion on the matter? Uh, Deputy Mayor Carter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mayor Sherry can explain this as far as the uh, er &R fund and what that money has in it for this particular issue. So this is a new addition. Um, so the er &R fund would not have um, savings set aside to replace this. Um, as you know, the ERNR fund is mostly set up for replacements. Um, this would not be a replacement. This is a new addition. And if you're wanting to know how much money there is, there's over $4 million in there. But know that that's savings for all vehicle replacements in the future as well. Okay, uh, Councilman Brevin. What is the life expectancy of this? <laughs> Good question. Um, you know, I can only speak for the lift we currently have at Public Works, which is a different type of lift, but as long as they're maintained, about 20 plus years is not unheard of. I mean, there is required maintenance that has to be done to them. And so that's something that we definitely need to make sure and pay attention to so that we can and, you know, have that kind of service line. Would this go on the ER and R as a replacement item 15, would. 20 years from now? Okay. Okay, do we have any further discussion? Council Member of Climans. So uh, as we as we are approaching, I understand why this wasn't purchased as part of the public work. But there's no margin at all left in the public works. There is some there is some funds left. We still have to finish up uh, purchasing a, 
the racking. We're still waiting on assembling the quotes for that. There is some additional items. We just did the furniture walkthrough. So there's a, a few items there that still need to be picked up. Um, there is some other mechanic items that I did leave as part of the soft cost that I've been trying to hold on to some money for in order to purchase for that program as part through those funds that are remaining. So I, I intend to fully expend the remaining dollars, which right now I think is a little over 85,000 that remains. Uh, Councilmember Salami. Right. So good question, Mr. Councilmember McClyman is there. The funds for this equipment, usually my normal understanding of the ER and R of like rolling stock, um, the department would purchase the unit, say if it was a police car or a senior van or whatever it was, you know, that department would be purchasing that piece of equipment, giving it to the ER and R fund, and then, you know, the, the department keeps backfilling it so they could purchase the new one eventually, right? But this is not something you drive around. <laughs> this is a lift or whatever. It's a piece of equipment. So back to Mr. McClyman's point, when, where the funding would come to actually, you know, who who's paying for it? Is it proposed that the funds actually come out of the ER and, you know, that's supposed to be a revolving fund. Well, that's what the, the decision card said, it's the ER and our fund. But why would, you know, see what I'm saying? Because the ER and our fund so, is mine, mm -hmm. doesn't normally purchase things. Go ahead and share. Uh, we, have our, we have our yeah. police radios on the ER and our fund, though. Could you explain the police, the police radios the are not on the ER. Police radios no. are not on ER. Is that rolling. what you said? You can't police drive radios? Them. Yeah, I thought we were putting them on. The, no, so the police radios yeah. are in your um, cum cumulative reserve fund. We are adding to that fund. Um, and I believe those purchases need to be made in 2024. The chief can correct me on that. I don't recall. Um, ERNR is supported by all funds throughout the city. So um, I can see your point, Councilmember Schlotman, that we could either charge this out to all the funds um, based upon their usage, which I have the rates of usage for vehicles uh, per mm -hmm. fund. So we could either do it that way or we could charge it to the fund and it gets kind of um, costed out through those rates anyway. So kind of six, yeah. one, half a dozen, the other on this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But who purchased, you know, this? The thing to uh, you know who who gave birth to it. So if, um, police cars point? are actually purchased by ERR, and then huh. if it comes up to more than what the replacement is, then the um, the general fund would kick in the balance. So the police department would have to kick in the balance. Yeah. Um, but since it's a replacement, everything is purchased typically by ERR, &R, and then it gets costed out to our our program. Right, because I'm trying not to, you know, shortchange our ER and R, because normally we have a lot of issues with, you know, replacement costs, and it sounds you're confident that that's the this is the best way to do this, basically, right? You're you're confident you're not recommend because you, you, as Councilmember McClyman points out, clearly we could use funds from the bonds or what have you to purchase this piece of equipment, give it to the ER and R, and then have it finance it. it your suggest what's the actual suggestion for the funding sources? <laughs> ER. So, it, um, as original Ryan account. was saying, he he doesn't have the extra money in the bond fund, mm -hmm. um, okay. so there there aren't the funds there to purchase this. Okay. Um, so it's going to be through the ER and R fund or costed out through every individual fund. Sure. Yeah. And okay. you would suggest we use the ER and R monies to yeah you know it's one hundred and forty thousand dollars if this is a purchase that okay. you feel um is yep. warranted i would because there's over four million dollars in there and i don't believe the program and I, I i get what you're coming to because the program back in the day um as you know you've been here long enough did have issues and we did have to go through and make sure that the funds were contributing because um prior to my arrival it's my understanding that they did rob that fund so um, that is not happening under my watch, and there is enough money to continue to support um, all of the rolling stock. Thank you. Okay, and uh, for clarity uh, for the public and the record, and quite frankly myself, um, what does um, E R N R stand for, Ms. Ryerson? Equipment, equipment reserve and replacement fund. 
Okay, thank you very much. Okay, do we have any further discussion on the matter? Council Member Watson. Well, what Mr. Swapman is talking about, Mr. McClellan is talking about, I'm concerned too. This should have been purchased with the building, public works building part of the whole project. I'm surprised it came to the very tail end where we didn't bring it up sooner, part of the, and then you could have moved over to ENR. And I'm also worried about, and we've always talked about make sure we have funds to buy new vehicles, other replacement equipment you need in public works. And all of a sudden now we're buying this of a budget where it should have been in the public works building plan originally, and now it's being thrown to the last minute. So why wasn't this done in the first place? A couple of reasons. One is is that uh, the, pri the priority is making sure we can finish construction of the facility. That has to be the priority. So I'm going to put off any other purchase that I can in order to ensure that first that's going to occur. That's our big ticket item. That is the one that, that needs to happen. Second, it just took time to get accurate quotes to be able to purchase the product. It took over a year just to get quotes together to be able to purchase this equipment. So we started this process in June, July of 2021, and I didn't actually get the quotes from the vendors until August of this year. By that point, I'm committed to just trying to finish construction. I'm not going to try and push this purchase through and risk having to come back and ask for general fund dollars to finish construction of the, of the public services center. And I, I'm comfortable that Sherry's telling me that we've got enough eating funds at ENR you know, to get that taken care of. That's always been a priority. Mr. Evans talked about that himself in the past. We have money to pay for replacement vehicles and, and other things in that, in that fund. So, okay. thank you. Councilmember um, Watson. Uh, Councilmember Clymans, I saw you raise your hand. So, you, you have a, a valid quote that's going to be valid? Correct. Okay, and Deputy Mayor uh, Carter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess my question would be, um, is, isn't this something we don't we haven't had this right Al's been out there doing it on in the ground which is terrible um, and I don't want to see that for the new guys at the same time I want to be uh, conscious of what we're doing and shouldn't this be maybe be something we put into the ER and our fund so that hey we're gonna get in the future but maybe it's two years out or three years out because we have slowly put money in over that to take care of that issue I understand where you're coming from, but it is, it is we believe, something that we need now. As, especially as we go into this season, we have had a really tough time keeping all of our plows on the road. This will enable us to be able to turn those vehicles around and get them back out there and provide that level of service that we feel the community needs. Okay, do we have any further discussion? Okay, let's take this to a vote. So all in favor of approving the heavy duty uh, vehicle lift um, from the ER and R fund, say aye. 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 Any nays? Nay. nay. And that nay would be uh, Council Member Watson and Deputy Mayor Carter. Have any abstentions? Okay. Uh, the heavy duty vehicle lift uh, was approved. So I believe that is all we have tonight for the decision cards. This was our short night, everybody. Uh, I would suggest next week and the week after that, we bring our little snack pack puddings or something so that we can uh, <laughs> keep going. Okay, and uh, Council Member Baldwin, I noticed that this is the first meeting we've had where I haven't heard you say anything. I so. know. It's, it's miraculous. <laughs> okay. Council Member McClyman. Is there going to be a decision card for the battery for the clock? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a big it's battery. It costs too much. Yeah. Or at least and, uh, a plan to replace the I, battery. Councilmember McClymans, I task you to go to Target for replacement. <laughs> Copy. I'm just going to get on Amazon and ship one here first. <laughs> okay. I believe we, uh, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Nice. Thanks, Sherry. Good night, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah.